Hi guys, well this is just a little discussion going on at our forum as to what um, a battery would do if we had a over unity device that was looped back in to the battery that was running it. Uh, this theory first started by Dad Have um, seemed to make quite a bit of sense to me so we've just made a quick little setup. I have wires and crap going everywhere, I know. But um, it is just to show you the effects that we get and how we may be simply able to read the battery voltage and what that does when the motor generator is disconnected to see whether or not we have an over unity machine, which of course is yet to be seen. So here we have just a 12, uh, it's actually a 24 volt motor, we will be running it on 12 volts, it's out of a scooter, our tiny little coil is going to be our generator, our cap and four wave bridge rectifier to make sure it's a nice smooth current going back into our battery. Um, so we're going to see what happens to a battery when it's running in under unity mode as of course this surely would be um, but then we're going to see what happens with the battery voltage which is this meter here when we disconnect both the load and the charge at the same time if we had an over unity machine so um, what I've got here is just a pulse width modulator hooked up to a 12 volt battery that's hooked up to my charger so the voltage in that battery is higher than the voltage in this battery because of the um, losses, small losses in the pulse width modulator the voltage has to be a bit higher to get any sort of current to flow into a battery of the same capacity um, so we'll start the machine up with the PWM turned right down this is the amp meter that's coming from the PWM going to our cap which the generator coil is hooked to this is the amp meter from that cap to the battery which I have hooked up to through a series of this amp meter which is going to the motor so that amp meter is measuring the motor amps being drawn from our 12 volt battery and the reason that I've hooked this amp meter up is so we can disconnect both the load and the return to the battery at the very same time. And once we do that, we can then see what happens to the battery voltage. So our theory was that an under unity machine we would turn on, our battery voltage of course would drop and uh, which is this voltage here, it will drop from 1255 as we would all know and when we disconnect the load and of course our charge at the same time this battery would voltage would go back up um, it would see a recovery voltage back to or close to what it started with depending on how long you run the machine for we are only going to be running at a short time um, otherwise we're simply just going to run out of time but we will see the effect okay so once again that's the amps from the PWM that is the amps from our charging system back to our source battery and of course those amps will be at our battery volts and that is our battery volts and this one over here is the amps at the battery volts the motor is using to run so first I'll hook up the PW, oh no, I'll hook up the motor first so we don't fill the cap up. We will then hook up our PWM. As you can see, no amps from the PWM. Our generator is returning 12 milliamps to the battery. And our motor is drawing about 300 milliamps from the battery, 290 to 300. So, I don't know, it's probably around 7, 8 percent efficient. As you can see our battery voltage is dropping as it normally would. 
We will let it run for a little while. This is something a little interesting at the end of this test I'll show you as well. So what you'll see when we go into our mock over unity test, we will be drawing a current, of course, from the PWM, feeding into that cap, and then this current here will be added on top because this is the current we already have coming from our generator coil. But at the moment, we're only using the generator coil to put charge back into our battery we're putting 12 milliamps at 12.44 volts in. We are drawing 290 milliamps at 12.44, 12.43 volts to run the system. So very, very under unity as we would expect. So we're now going to disconnect this lead here, which of course disconnects our output into the battery and also the output from the battery into the motor at the same time. So that is our battery voltage. I will disconnect the white lead. And that is something we see all the time. The battery starts to recover. So the Battery voltage starts to go up when the machine, when the prime mover, should I say, and the generator are disconnected sim simultaneously. Okay, so we're going to start it back up again. And now we're going to go into our mock over unity mode. We're in that, we're going to go to see the effect reasonably quickly. We will put 600 milliamps out of our generating system back into our battery that is our battery voltage we will now crank up the PWM oh, that was a bit much 3 hard to do one handed Very touchy. Okay, close enough. So you notice here from the PWM drawing, I was dropping because the battery voltage is climbing, and you would see that that is plus the 12 milliamps we're getting from the generator itself. You can see here our battery has risen to over its starting voltage at the start of the test. Um, which is simulating an over unity machine, more coming out back into the battery than what we're drawing from it. We're still drawing out 290 milliamps at that voltage. And we're pumping in 560 odd milliamps at that voltage. The reason this is going down is because the battery voltage is lifting up and it's getting closer to the voltage of the supply battery for the PWM. So we will let that run for a little while. And then two things will happen when we disconnect the battery to both the motor and the generator. By the way, um, 
my Lockridge device project. I, well, you can't see it, but I have the rotor put back in. I only have two legs or two poles on the rotor with four neos on it, and um, at the moment that's that strong I can hardly turn the bloody thing around so um, I have connected this up to a battery and uh, put this in the position it would be when it was going to fire and firing up the coils puts enough force on this shaft that I cannot hold it by my hands and if I put a pair of multi grips on the shaft sit them on the bench touch the coils on the 12 volt battery it will lift the front of this motor off the bench and that is a cast iron motor and you can see how big it is it's very heavy so plenty of torque um, one thing's for sure it'll be an awfully powerful pulse motor once it's gone if nothing else but back to our test you can see that our battery is still rising of course our current is coming down because our battery is rising and like I said that is because it's getting closer to our battery that is driving the PWM in regards to voltage. So two things are going to happen if our machine is over unity. Our theory is that that voltage should drop when we disconnect the machine and the machine should continue to run on the generator itself. So we will now disconnect our battery and you can see that the battery voltage drops because more charge was being put into it than was taken out of it and you can see this clearly just by charging a battery with a standard battery charger let it fully charge put a voltmeter on your battery disconnect the battery charger the voltage in that battery will drop slightly just as it has there and the other thing is, of course, your motor will keep going with the battery disconnected altogether. So, that was just a theory we had. And I just made a video to clearly explain as to what we were talking about. Uh, they were thinking maybe we were a little bit nuts. Why would the battery voltage drop when you disconnect it if you're putting more power into it than you were taking from it? And uh, for the very simple reason, that it happens when you disconnect the battery charger. So, um, I believe with a motor generator setup that returns the power from the generator back into the source battery, that an easy way to measure an over unity device is indeed to disconnect the battery. The battery voltage should fall, and of course, your motor should continue to run. That's it for me, so, uh, oh no, there was one other thing I was going to show you. The generator is supposed to be a loss. Okay, so um, as you can see, we put 268 milliamps into the, um, motor basically because we're putting it into the cap and that cap is feeding the motor at the moment because the battery is disconnected. So from our PWM we're putting 269, 270 and into the motor after the generator we're putting 276, 278, somewhere around there. So 268 from the PWM and 280 on the PWM plus the generator and we can confirm this here 280 um, so if the generator is a loss why we're we putting more current into the motor at that set voltage than what we're pulling from the PWM now just to clarify something else um, some may say if I disconnect this coil or move the coil away from there this motor will pull less current Indeed you are correct, and the current that it pulls through running in that setup without the coil there 
It is exactly one milliamp less than what it does with the tiny little coil there out of the relay is placed next to the rotor. So we lose one milliamp and we gain that much. Alright guys, cheers from me and we'll see you soon.